calls. Okay, um, for your vehicle right here, here's your tech worksheet for the day. And I want to focus on getting the headlights in. I want to focus on getting the tail lights in and the assemblies in, operational. And um, basically, I want to be able to look at the car on the outside and see that it's done. I think I probably got involved with uh, cars when I was when I was a kid back in Australia. Um, after school, I used to wash uh, wash cars at the at a local uh, car dealership, just an independent car dealership. And uh, I think I started off doing that about 11 years old or something. And then uh, the day that I remember, the boss turned around to me and goes. I said, he said to me, look, you need to clean that car over there and all the rest of that and just move this one here. And I go, mate, I can't move the car. I had, had to come and get you. He's like, mate, move the car. Ever since I got to drive a car, I was hooked. That was it. <laughs> and then when uh, I, didn't, uh, I knew that he raced cars, right, but he raced a, a Ford Escort, Escort and it had a Cosworth head and all this sort of stuff on it. Um, I remember seeing him in the back room there starting up this car and this thing had some serious bang to it. You remember the old racing bell helmet ad used to say if you've got a $10 head wear a $10 helmet? Yeah, right? yeah. Well, it's like this, it's like look, you know what, if you're used to working on Volkswagens that come up to, sorry not Volkswagens, Chevy Caprices or something, right? Yeah. That come up to 30 grand. That's great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But when you work on cars, you know, like the Bugatti that I finished, $1.2 million. That's what Uncle Bill got, of course. Different right? level. It's a whole different level. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm better than you. It yeah. just means that this is what I am used to doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. If you and, can't. and you're expected to be the best. You're expected to offer superior talent on a car of that level. And went on to work with... Um, General Motors in Australia, General Motors Holden. I mean, I, I used to work for GM. General Motors. And we were involved in design and stuff like that. It's funny how everybody's seen the new, you know, the new Dodge Challenger and the new Camaro, right? Well, to me, there were two very different design thoughts on those cars. I mean, the Camaro, while it took a lot of the elements of the 69 Camaro, right, with the Coke bottle hips and all that sort of stuff, what they did was they they went ahead and added a lot of uh, artistic license to it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we used to have to rely on somebody from the, the mini bike club and my mate from church, his dad used to pick us up and um, we'd all go out and uh, go out and race the bikes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, once I got on a motorcycle, I was hooked. I was never that good at racing. I think I was probably maybe scared or something. Yeah, so I started riding on the road when I was about 15. Um, I got a funny feeling it may not have been exactly legal, but you know what? Uh, then started riding Harleys. And well, I grew up riding Nortons and stuff like that. Um, put my first Norton together when I was a kid. What other people think of me is none of my business. I couldn't care less, right? If I worried about uh, people thinking that uh, I was a misfit, I would have never put my ass on a Harley, you know? Um, people that you run up next to at the lights and stuff like that that you're never going to meet again in your life. Who cares? Ollie back in Australia. Ollie back in Australia. Ollie back in Australia. <coughs> <coughs> Doing something that's different. Doing something that you can't buy out of a catalogue. <laughs> Doing something that the customer can take ownership of and say, you know what? Like the guys that get a new tattoo and they said, oh no, the guy the guy did, this is a one-off. You mean like that one over there on the wall? Right, a one-off? Oh, you mean a one-off on your arm, right? You know what? Uh, like they say, you can't do custom out of a catalog. I don't know, let's, you know, Ollie back in Australia. Ollie back in Australia. Ollie back in Australia. <laughs> like I've had two US patents, two provisionals. We never decided to keep them for um, full US patents, but I've always liked to make things slightly better. To see something and to be able to work out how to make it better. Talking about the big three uh, in American manufacturers. Probably back in Australia. Um, I grew up being a bit more of a Ford guy. 
but that was because of more of the Ford presence in Australia. Probably back in Australia. Um, GMs were fairly much, uh, you know, it was harder to, it was just, it was so hard to get an American car in Australia as a kid that you had to get what you could, right? <coughs> 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 Right? I mean, you know, they all had their good things. I mean, there's a, probably one of my favourite body shapes uh, out of the Ford line is the 64 to 67 or 65 to 67 fastback Fairlanes. 